Well, good morning, family and friends. I am Minister John Pickens, and I would like to thank you for joining me today for the word of God this morning. I have to begin by giving honor to God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for saving me from my sins and commissioning me to preach his word to all of his people all around the world. Amen. Now, today's scripture and text for today will be coming from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. That's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. Thank you. I will begin at verse 1. Jeremiah pleased the Lord. Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. Yet, let me talk with you about your judgments. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are those who happy deal so treacherously? You have planted them, yes, they have taken root. They grow, yes, they bear fruit. You are near in their mouth, but you are far from their mind. But you, O Lord, you know me. You have seen me, and you have tested my heart toward you. Pull them up and out like sheep for the slaughter, and prepare them for the day of slaughter. How long will the land mourn? and the herbs of every field with it. The beasts and birds are consumed for the wickedness of those who dwell there because they said he will not see our final end. And the Lord replied to Jeremiah, if you have run with the footmen and they have wearied you, then how can you contend with horses? And if in the land of peace in which you trusted, they wearied you, then how will you do in the floodplain of the Jordan? Amen. That's the book of Jeremiah chapter 12, verses one through five. Amen. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, blessed Lord, for this beautiful Sunday morning that you have gathered us all again around the world to partake and to listen and to receive your word this morning. We just pray, Heavenly Father, that you open our hearts and our minds to be able to receive, amen, the bread of life from heaven today. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that the words from my mouth, Lord, are your words meant to go forth, to disseminate into our hearts and minds, to bring forth the truth that you call for to bring forth. Again, we want to bless your holy name today, Lord Jesus, and thank you. Thank you again. In your precious holy name, we pray today. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you again, brothers and sisters, for joining me for today's Sunday morning word of God. Amen. Now, uh, today, I'd like to talk with you a few moments uh, concerning a topic called testing the faithful. Yes, the Lord will test even his most faithful servants on a regular basis. Amen. Now, the background for our scripture takes place involving spiritual dialogue between God and the prophet Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah is the son of Hilkiah, who was called to be a prophet. He was called to be a prophet before he was even born. The Lord confirmed this in uh, chapter 29, verse 11, where he says, before he was formed in his mother's womb, God had created a purpose and a plan for his life. And just as he had done so for Jer Jeremiah, he has also done so for all of us. Amen. Now, Jeremiah was tasked during that time with preaching to the nation of Judah. Uh, preaching to the nation of Judah to warn them of the coming invasion brought about because of Israel's disobedience to the Lord. They disobeyed, they disobeyed him by worshiping other gods. Now, Jeremiah still uh, did this for over 20 years. He went over preaching for over 20 years, as we know, as the weeping prophet. Amen. He's called the weeping prophet because he cared very deeply for Israel and he knew of the impending doom that was ahead. Now, Jeremiah also endured other enormous burdens. Uh, few in the ministry have to deal with. Uh, one of these burdens, uh, the Lord told him in verses 16, uh, chapter 16, verses one through four, not to marry. God told Jeremiah not to marry and to have any children because of what is going to happen to them in the coming invasion. So Jeremiah, he carried many burdens in his ministry, so much so that he asked uh, God in this conversation, why were the way of the wicked prospering? And why had so many innocent people had to suffer before the end? We've all heard this before. Why does it seem that the rich get richer. Amen. Well, God's reply would not only address Jeremiah's burden, but it would also present in a new context his ways, which are without completely explaining always what he does, because we know his ways are not our ways. So in today's text, uh, Jeremiah, just like us, he would learn to have to trust God even more. He would have to trust God when he does not understand, and we have to trust God when we do understand. Amen. Now let's start from the top. No matter, brothers and sisters, how we want to believe in another reality or another alternative truth, amen, we cannot expect to walk before we crawl, amen. Chapter 6, verses 5 says, if you have run with the footmen and they have wearied you, then how can you contend with the horses, amen? We must start small in this world in order to end up big. All of us, many of us, we want to automatically start at the top, but that's not how it's done. Uh, now, everyone must go through some version of training or testing, no matter what your profession is or trade whether you are an athlete, a musician, an academic, uh, services, no matter where you are, you must endure some sort of testing. Uh, verse five uses the term footman. Uh, 
Now, footman, as we know in ancient warfare, was a foot soldier. Uh, translated to today's military context, it would be considered an infantryman and foot, a foot soldier. Now, in the military, uh, all personnel, great and small, have to attend some form of basic training. Uh, whether you're going to be a special forces operator or whether you're going to be a fighter pilot or an administrative assistant, a four-star general or a four-star admiral, uh, everyone is going to have to uh, go through some form of basic training. It's, it's unavoidable. It's not something that you can get a waiver out of, brothers and sisters. Now, we, uh, as the people of God, we are in the Lord's army. And in his army, our battlefield, as the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, chapter six, verses 12, that is the spiritual realm. Amen. We are not at war amen, with flesh and blood, although it seems that way, we are really at war in the spirit. So why do we experience physical pain if we are in war in the spirit? Well, simply put, brothers and sisters, the two are connected. Now, the physical realm, the very life that we're living, this is our boot camp. This is our trial. This is our trial, our testing process. Our spiritual training that is happening now is for the next realm, amen, the spiritual training in the spiritual realm. So one has an effect on another. Amen. Now, the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 18 says, whatever we bind on earth, amen, whatever we bind in heaven, amen, will be loosed on earth. Amen. Whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Amen. God is telling Jeremiah that if you cannot handle a small thing, you cannot deal with something bigger. Now, how many of us growing up couldn't wait to take off the training wheels whenever you first learn to ride a bicycle? For those who've learned, uh, how many of us you've taken off the training? You could not wait to take those training wheels off. So, you, so that you can show everyone what you can do. Now, what happened the moment you took those training wheels off and you attempted to get back on the bicycle? You probably fell down. Well, here the Lord is not only answering Jeremiah's question, but all of our questions, amen, as to why the wicked are allowed to prosper at the expense of so many poor and innocent people and in the face of impending doom. Now, the current circumstances, believe it or not, that you are experiencing in uh, your life um, and, and in the world that we see today among us, Despite the bloodshed and the countless lives that have been lost since the beginning of time, the Lord our God is speaking to all of us today, brothers and sisters. Just as he was speaking to Jeremiah, he's speaking to all of us. If we cannot handle running with the footmen, how can we handle the rewards of a higher level of warfare? Amen. Now, next up, uh, the Lord is testing not just Jeremiah, but he shows us through, that throughout his word, he tests other uh, figures, other faithful servants throughout his word. As we know, in the Bible, uh, Abraham was tested, amen. Before he became the father of many nations, he too would be tested by placing his son Isaac on the altar. Now, after all that Abraham had been through, losing his nephew uh, Lot and his family and his wife, him and his wife constantly being tested many, many times, God still tested Abraham in the end before it was over. Now, even so, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen, the Son of God, before he began his ministry, he too would be tested. Now, the scripture tells us very clearly that Jesus was tempted in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. But the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrew, chapter 4, verses 15, that he was tempted in, throughout all of his ministry, in all ways, amen, and each time sinning not. So you see, brothers and sisters, God's ways are not our ways, amen. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He knows exactly what it is to be us because he made us and he lives as he lived as, uh, as us through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, his ways are beyond our comprehension, and so are his training methods, but guess what? So are his rewards. Amen. His rewards are also beyond our comprehension and imagination. Uh, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 says, uh, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, nor entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. Now, so even so, uh, he gives his toughest test a man to his toughest soldiers, but also he gives the best rewards. Now, we must understand this other aspect, which I'm quite sure many of us already do. Life is not always fair, brothers and sisters. We are not always handed the same hand in this world. Verse five tells us, and if in the land of peace in which you trusted, they wearied you, then how will you do in the floodplain of the Jordan? Now, in other words, if we cannot handle the rough times uh, in a good environment, how are we going to handle the rough times in an even worse environment? So God is communicating to Jeremiah at that particular time to handle your environment in your current situations. Oftentimes, your deliverance will be in that same situation. So here again, the Lord is communicating to Jeremiah that as bad as his situation is, as bad as his outlook is on life and the current state of Judah, 
he is in a much better situation than living in the floodplain of the Jordans. Simply put, God is conveying to Jeremiah the word called perspective. Now, perspective can get very, very ugly at times, but it's very transparent and true. Now, we see when a river floods, brothers and sisters, it washes away everything, every trace of life uh, behind, leaving behind only mud and dirt and rocks. Uh, a riverbed is not a very fun place to be after it floods. So God is uh, getting across to Jeremiah that as bad as his situation is, there is another situation that's always going to be worse. And at that very moment, even though his situation couldn't, it seemed, get any worse, he's relaying to all of us today to have the word perspective. And in fact, it's something to pray for brothers and sisters, because no matter how bad our testing is at this time, there's always somewhere, somewhere, uh, someone somewhere that is enduring a very much, much far difficult situation. So as you continue to read the word, as you continue to read throughout the Bible, that the Babylonians were used by God to conquer Judah because of their disobedience. But later on, the Babylonians themselves would later be brought into judgment because of their own wickedness. So no one is going to escape, brothers and sisters, the eyes of the Lord, no culture, no nation. Everyone is going to be held in account at some point. Now, again, we cannot skip, uh, we, can't, we can't skip the examinations and go straight to graduation. All of us, when we were in school, we hated those semester exams. We hated the final exams. We wanted to get out of them as soon as possible and go straight to graduation. But unfortunately, brothers and sisters, that's not how life works. Uh, testing is a part of the process, amen. Our testing reveals our true nature. It reveals our strengths, our weaknesses, and in general, it reveals our true character. Uh, testing reveals our foundations. It, it reveals our fortitude. Uh, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 13 says, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall reveal every man's work and what sort it is. James chapter one, verses three and five says, knowing the testing of the Lord, uh, the testing of your faith produces patience. So all of us, brothers and sisters, are going to have to endure testing. None of us are going to get waivers. None of us are going to get exemptions. In fact, and in this time of testing, you may have done very well in school. You may have even been a 4.0 student. Amen. But according to the word of God, none of us are 4.0 spiritual GPAs. So again, if you do not feel like you belong with the group, if you do not feel like you belong in a particular congregation, you don't feel perfect, you believe that you have a past. Well, guess what? You've come to the right place and that right place is the word of God. You see, even for those of us who believe that we have arrived, for those of us who believe that we are above reproach, the book of Romans chapter three, verses 23 reminds us of reality. It says, all has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means none of us, brothers and sisters has a 4.0 as believers in Jesus Christ. None of us, none of us are perfect. None of us are blameless in our ways. So regardless about how much some of us may want to brag about our anointings or spiritual feats or being chosen, et cetera, et cetera, none of us is above testing. None of us is above making mistakes. Amen. Bless his holy name today. Now, this also flows directly into what we were talking about earlier this week. Amen. Even while being tested, brothers and sisters, we must understand that uh, the faithful, those who are his servants, the believers, we are still capable of making mistakes. Now, earlier this week, we talked about the concept of being careful of the words that we speak because loose lips sink ships. Um, and we're all honest, we probably all have sunk in our fair share of boats in our life at some point or another, all of us. So if you haven't been perfect in this area, if you have not been blameless, if you said things you weren't supposed to say, uh, just get in line because all of us have done this in some form or fashion. None of us are perfect. So even so, we must understand that no matter how faithful we are, or at least how faithful we think we are, we are never above being tested. We are never above revealing secrets and things that we are not supposed to. So uh, centerfold, our scripture uh, from this week takes us to King Hezekiah, king of Israel at that particular time. Second Kings chapter 20, verses 12 through 9, the Babylonian envoys. At that time, Baradoc Baladin, the son of Baladin, the king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he heard that Hezekiah had came down sick. Now, Hezekiah was attentive to them. He brought them in. He was very friendly to them. And he showed them all of the house of his treasures, the silver and the gold, the spices and the precious ointments, his armories. He showed them all the treasures among his house. Now, there was nothing in his house or in his dominion, dominion meaning kingdom, nothing that Hezekiah did not show them. Now, uh, Isaiah, the prophet, heard about what happened, and he went to King Hezekiah, and he said to him, what did these men say, and from where did they come from? So Hezekiah said, they came from a far country, from Babylon. So Hezekiah, or Isaiah, rather, asked them again, 
what have they seen in your house? And Hezekiah replied to him, they have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing in my house, in my churches that I have not shown him. So Isaiah replied to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried away to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will beget. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So Hezekiah said to Isaiah, the word of the Lord, which you have spoken is good. He said, will there not be peace and truth at least in my time? Amen. Now, again, Hezekiah is the 13th king of Israel at that time from the house of David. And he ascended to the throne at the age of 25, a very, very young age. Now, Hezekiah, he took power and he did. Yes, he did amazingly right throughout his tenure in the eyes of the Lord. He took down the Baals. He took down the idols throughout all the temples, uh, throughout all the land of Judah. He took them down. Now, after this, the Lord um, spared Israel, amen, and saved them from the Assyrians and others uh, because Hezekiah obeyed the voice of the Lord. Now, after that time, Hezekiah, he became sick. He became sick and near death to the uh, part where Isaiah came to him and told him to get his house in order because he was going to die. Now, Hezekiah then turned and pray to the Lord in earnest and sincerity, be, uh, weeping uh, bitterly uh, for healing, asking for healing for the Lord, which the Lord extended him 15 years. Now, our message today concerns what Hezekiah did after he was healed. So after his testing uh, on health, he was still being tested, believe it or not. And uh, that's what our message is going to focus on today as well. So again, um, in this life of being tested, we must continuously be careful about what we say. Now, we live in a time and a day and age where we have social media transparency to society. We, we put everything, amen, for everyone to read and to hear and to know about. Anything good or bad that happens in our life, uh, it must hit the hot presses. It must hit the public airwaves. We must understand, though, that just because times have changed and we now have social media, the societal norms and dangers have not changed. So it does not mean that all uh, people fundamentally have changed with the times for the better. They have not. Uh, there are many old principles that still apply to this day. So oftentimes we want to move forward into life and cast out the old. Well, we must understand there are certain principles that still hold true to this day. Simply put, brothers and sisters, try to keep as much as your information as a need to know basis. Amen. Every emissary, an emissary is a messenger. Um, every emissary or messenger is not always a friend. Verses 12 through 13 states, um, at that time, Baradak Baladin, the son of Baladin, king of Babylon, he sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he heard that Hezekiah had been sick. And Hezekiah was very attentive to them. Amen. He showed, Hezekiah showed them all that was in his house, all of the treasures, the gold, the silver, the spices, the ointments, his armory. He showed them all that was in his house. Brothers and sisters, we must be careful about what we reveal about our blessings. Every gift is not a really gift. It could be a Trojan horse. Amen. Now, Baradak Baladin, the son uh, Bala, uh, Babylon, the king of Babylon. Rather, he sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, uh, trying to see whether or not he was uh, probably actually sick. But how many of us actually believe they came to Hezekiah to probably see what he had? Now, Hezekiah, he was very attentive to them. He was very friendly to them. And he showed them again every single thing that was in his house. Now, although we know King Hezekiah, he did right by the way of the Lord. He still had too big of a heart. He still had too big of a heart by showing off all of his treasures to these individuals. He was so happy about his healing, amen, that he ended up revealing things that he should not have revealed. Now, some of us, we find ourselves in this situation. Some of us, we too have very big hearts. We have very big hearts, but we reveal too much, amen, to the wrong people. Now, the scripture also says Hezekiah revealed his armory. He revealed his armory. Now, the word armory means weapons, brothers and sisters. So Hezekiah also showed the enemy, all of his weapons, all of the weapons of the kingdom of Israel. So no military action, brothers and sisters. We don't need doctorates, degrees in warfare or military science to understand that if you give all your information away to the enemy, if you tell them all about your targets, uh, your weapons, your strategic defenses and objectives, they're going to have that information and they're going to use it against you. So we cannot assume that everyone already knows everything. Many of us have said, well, Brother John, today, Everything is already on the internet, not necessarily brothers and sisters. The internet is going to have that which what you put on it. Don't just assume everyone always knows every single thing about you. Amen. Now, some of us will be thinking, would this situation have mattered anyway? We know the scripture says the Babylonians were going to invade. So it didn't really matter what, what Hezekiah showed them or not. Well, actually, the scripture says it did matter, brothers and sisters, for Hezekiah showed them everything. Yes, Israel's future disobedience would have eventually led to them being punished anyway. 
But by showing them where all the money is, by showing them where all the weapons were, it no doubt became valuable intelligence for the future Babylonians to invade. Don't give the enemy, brothers and sisters, a, a helping hand to defeat you. Uh, the scripture says that the Babylonians came to check on Hezekiah because he had felt sick. Now, how many of us, again, believe that they were simply coming to Israel just to check on Hezekiah? No, they were checking to see exactly what he had. This was an opportunity that they used to exploit to try to see just how much he had over there. Now, the enemy will oftentimes come dressed as a friend. The Bible says that the enemy often appears as an angel of light. Amen. Nonetheless, do not cast your pearls to swine, brothers and sisters. Do not reveal all of your secrets out into the streets. So don't assume everyone automatically knows everything about you and what you have been blessed with. The book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse 12 says, a man who holds his peace is a man of understanding. A man who holds his peace is a man of understanding. So the Bible is telling us, again, don't assume that everyone already knows uh, the, the plans that the Lord has for you. That's why oftentimes he will not reveal everything to us because we will reveal everything. We see this taking place again with another very important figure in the Bible, Joseph. The book of Genesis chapter 37 says, Joseph, the man of dreams, had many multiple dreams where his father, his brother, uh, and his um, his mother and his brothers uh, would all bow down to him. They would all bow down to him, amen, and worship him. Now, Joseph's dreams, nor him revealing them, went over well with his brothers. As we know, on top of all of this, his father Jacob made Joseph a coat of many colors. He made him a coat of many colors that he did not make for his other brothers and sisters. So again, we see this did not go over well with Joseph's brothers as they had already envied him greatly. On top of this, he's telling him his dreams where they're going to be down, uh, bowing down to him. Now, these events, as we know, would all lead up to Joseph being captured by his brothers and sold into slavery into Egypt. That's what Egypt represents, brothers and sisters. Egypt represents slavery, whether it's in the Old Testament context, the New Testament context, or today's context. Now, revealing your secrets could cause you too to be brought into slavery. The book of Proverbs chapter six, verses two says, you have been snared, ensnared by the words of your mouth. Amen. Our words, brothers and sisters, are a very powerful weapon. Now, how many of us knew that we were all born with a weapon of mass destruction? Yes, we don't have to go anywhere looking for weapons of mass destruction. We are all carrying one, brothers and sisters. We all have a built-in nuclear, chemical, and biological weapon of mass destruction. And that weapon, as we know, is our mouth. Now, in fact, this weapon, our mouth, is so powerful that it has the power of life and death in the tongue. Proverbs chapter 18, verses 21 states, life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Uh, we've all heard the saying growing up that sticks and stones may break our bones, but words may never hurt us. Brothers and sisters, unfortunately, that's one of the biggest lies ever told. Words can hurt. Amen. Now, for those of us who have to win every single debate, we have to always get our point across. We always have to have the last word. Let's keep in mind, Paul exhorts us. He tells us, don't try to win. Don't even try to engage in every debate. Doing so means we must utter lots of words, and in doing so, we will eat the fruits of our own words. Now, lips that reveal will steal. Amen. Lips that steal will kill and lip, the lips that kill will and can destroy. Amen. Bless his holy name today. So uh, all of this seems to imply that not only will you eat the fruits of your own lips, you could also put yourselves in situations where you have to eat the fruits uh, from the lips of another. Now, some of us, we love to hang around those who eat certain types of food. And if you hang around certain people long enough, you too will begin, uh, begin to develop some of their habits, some of their tastes, some of their tastes in food and clothes and entertainment. But we must be careful, brothers and sisters, about hanging out with those uh, with certain issues because believe it or not, just as they are going to be eating the fruits of their tongues, you too will begin to eat the fruits from their tongues. Now, before long, you will begin eating a man and talking and drinking and doing the exact same things there you, uh, that they are doing. But we must always understand whether or not you spoke those words or not, by you being in their vicinity, in their environment, you too will begin to taste of their fruits. Now, the Bible says, listen, loose lips sink ships. So Joseph, he learned throughout all of his experiences, after everything that he's going to go through, uh, through Potiphar's house and Pharaoh's house, everything and that he's going, that he's been through, basically is teaching him that he should not reveal all of the plans that the Lord has given to you. Now, we cannot handle, brothers and sisters, we uh, raise your hand, all of us. It's, it's hard for us enough to deal with the plans that we are already trying to bring to fruition, let alone the plans that the Lord has brought to fruition. Now, we have to trust God, brothers and sisters. We have to trust God uh, that when he brings us dreams uh, through his wonder, that he's going to bring them to fruition through his wonder working power. He's going to bring his dreams uh, through fruition. Now, notice I mentioned the word his as in God's dreams. 
yes, we must understand that even though Joseph was the one having them, those dreams were not Joseph's dreams. Those came from God. Amen. They were his dreams. So you see, brothers and sisters, there's a difference between trying to accomplish what we want in life versus accomplishing what the Lord has for our life. Amen. There's a difference between us dreaming and then us accomplishing the dreams that the Lord has for you. Now, oftentimes we do spend too much time in our life uh, trying to accomplish to do things, to bring things to fruition. Now, some of you may say, well, Brother John, should we not try to accomplish our dreams? Yes, of course. There's nothing wrong with trying to accomplish uh, something positive to do something positive to better your life. But we must understand something, brothers and sisters, as believers or those seeking to believe that there's a difference between God's dreams and your dreams. Have you ever wondered why certain things in life worked out and others did not? Have you uh, ever wondered why certain types of relationships worked out, certain types of business plans or education plans? Uh, could it be, brothers and sisters, that God had other plans for your life, uh, other plans and the plans that you had? Uh, we have our dreams, brothers and sisters, but God has dreams. Amen. He has a better dream, his will for our life. But we must understand that only his will, only his will will last forevermore. So this notion alone requires us to have a lot of faith in the Lord. We have to cast all of our cares and burdens upon him. Now, again, I'm not telling you it's going to be easy in this time of life, in this time of testing, that it's going to be easy. I know, and I'm still continuing to learn firsthand every day in my life, how difficult it can be at times to maintain trust with the Lord. Amen. But at all times, we must remember his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts, which means his timing, brothers and sisters, is not our timing. You see, whenever we try to get anxious, the enemy preys upon those times. But whenever we try to get ahead of what the Lord is trying to do, uh, the enemy will prey upon our lack of faith. You see, uh, this gets us anxious and an anxious person becomes very impatient. And an impatient person becomes very talkative and transparent, uh, just as Hezekiah was. Amen. He was so very happy, amen, that he had been healed. He was very anxious to get to the next point. He ended up revealing things in his dominion that he should not have. The scripture says that Hezekiah showed the Babylonians all that was in his house. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, Brother John, it says that Hezekiah showed the Babylonians all that was in his house. He wasn't simply talking with them. He wasn't just simply using his tongue. Well, brothers and sisters, yes, he was. He was talking and showing them at the same time. And on top of all of this, we must understand our words are also, our actions are also speech. You see, over 90% of communication is nonverbal. That means over 90% of our actions are indeed our speech. Our actions will and always speak louder than our words. So Hezekiah, he didn't simply get on the phone with the Babylonians and reveal his entire house. He actually showed them. He physically showed them all the blessings that were in his house. Now, we must understand something. If we, brothers and sisters, do not take care of what God has blessed us with, these things may become someone else's blessings. In fact, not because they stole them from you, but because you left the front door open. And not only did you leave the door open, you opened it for them and showed them everything that was inside. You see, during those eight days, uh, the city of Jerusalem had been constantly under siege, constantly under siege because one king may have obeyed the Lord and they had been saved. Another king would come take that uh, person's place and disobeyed and then things would be restored. They were constantly under siege back and forth. So a careful examination of the Old Testament will reveal that again, that the Israelites were not simply taken over because the opposing armies were stronger and they had better weapons. No, they were taken over because of disobedience. The Israelites were disobedient. They disobeyed the word and the commandment of the Lord. So don't, for us, brothers and sisters, don't let the disobedience ruin God's plans for all of our lives. Let, let us not let disobedience ruin the dreams that he has for all of us. Now, all of us, all of us on a regular basis, amen, we have to deal with these things. We have to uh, make sure we're not making life harder than it needs to be by disobeying the ways and the, uh, the laws of the Lord. Amen. Now, we must understand that uh, nothing we say or do is hidden from God. Verses 14 through 15 says, then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and said to him, what did these men say and, and from where did they come to you? So Hezekiah said they came from Babylon. And Isaiah said back into Hezekiah, what have they seen in your house? Now, Isaiah already knew what they had seen. The Lord had revealed it to him, but he wanted to see whether Hezekiah was going to be truthful or not. So Hezekiah answered, they have seen all that is in my house. So there is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. So to Hezekiah's credit, he's being true to his nature. He was not lying. He told them completely. He told Isaiah, yes, I showed him everything. I showed him everything in my house. Amen. So the point here is that Hezekiah he not only showed them everything, but he showed them all of the treasures that his fathers and forefathers had stayed, had uh, stored up for him, the generations of uh, the generational wealth for the next generation. Now, how many of us would have done what Hezekiah did? How many of us would actually take someone to our bank accounts 
um, ask for a, an account balance and show them everything in our banks. Well, before we start pointing fingers at Hezekiah saying, no, I wouldn't do that, we probably already have done it at some point of our life and may not even know it. In fact, some of us are probably continuing to do it to this very day. So uh, does the world need to know how many houses you own? Um, every time you purchase a new home, does everyone need to know? Um, how many cars do you own? Every time you purchase a new car, does everyone have to know? Uh, what about all of your accomplishments? We are all very proud of each other for accomplishing very new feats. But does everyone always has to know how much money you are making, how many investments or hedge funds or mutual funds for those who are investors? Does everyone always have to know what you have? Uh, now, those with big families, we love new additions to our families. Amen. But before we cry about our privacy being violated, we must ask ourselves, how much of our information have we already given to the enemy? Does the world need to know how many relationships you have, how, many, how much experience you have out there? Amen. So I can assure you, uh, the one who asks for us to take and cast all of our burdens upon him, our Lord and Savior. Amen. He tells us, take all of your information when something good happens to you, when something bad happens to you. We all remember growing up, coming from school, and we couldn't wait to get home to tell our uh, mom or dad that, hey, I received an A in school or I received a B. Well, that's what the Lord wants us to do with him. Every time something new happens, something every time something good or bad happens, he wants us to come to him, come to us, come to him as little children. Amen. But instead of being transparent with the Lord, the one who can lead and help and guide us, we're very transparent with the world. Amen. We are transparent with the world where well, the world, brothers and sisters, can they're not here to help you. They're not here to lead and guide you. They're only here to steal, kill and destroy. Now, the Babylonians in this scripture and text, they represent the world. And again, they are not here to they're not here to help you. Telling all of your personal information to the world, it may bring you a moment of satisfaction and gratification to show everybody what you've done, but we must understand this is nothing short of a recipe for disaster. Loose lips sink ships. Now, as we're going to see, there are consequences to revealing what should not be revealed. Amen. Verses 16 through 18 tells us, then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming and all that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And they shall take away some of your sons who will become, uh, who shall descend from you, whom you will beget, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Now here Isaiah is prophesizing about the days of Daniel and the Hebrew boys, uh, but his message to Hezekiah is very, very clear. Now everything Hezekiah has shown the enemy will one day in fact become the enemies. You see the Babylonians had all the intelligence they needed that once they initiated their assault years later, uh, it would be very, very easy. Now we know this would not take place until the days of King Zedekiah and the prophet Jeremiah, whom we just spoken about. Uh, this invasion would not happen until then. It will not happen until the King Nebuchadnezzar come and reign and reign over Babylon. Now we know the invasion did not last very long, brothers and sisters, because they knew where everything was located. They knew where the weapons were. They knew where the gold and the silver was. So all Hezekiah and all his head forefathers had stored up for future generations. All of that warfare, all of the tests that they had been going through would all be in vain because it would all be turned over to the enemy. So this is another reason our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ tells us, do not store up for yourselves material wealth where thieves and moths break in to steal. Now, you see, Jesus is telling us, um, is he telling us, brothers and sisters, that we shouldn't leave and inherit and store our children? No, that's not what he's saying. He's concerned about our mindset. He does not want our minds to be overly consumed with what we are accumulating and how many figures are in our bank accounts. Why? Because he's concerned that where our heart is, amen, that's where our, um, where our treasure is, that's where our hearts will be also, Matthew chapter 6, verses 21. So let us store up treasures, brothers and sisters, in heaven. Why? Because storing up treasures in heaven is storing up treasures for a kingdom that will last forevermore. Bless his holy name today. So uh, keep in mind, again, let us not point fingers at Hezekiah or Joseph because they were God-fearing men. But just in their times of testing, they just made mistakes. They made mistakes that ultimately came back to have consequences. So this is here for us to learn from. So verse 19 tells us, so Hezekiah said to Isaiah, the word of the Lord which you have spoken is good. For he said, will there not be peace and truth at least in my days? In other words, Hezekiah just wants to know, uh, will there be trouble in his days or will his days still be lasting in peace? So again, King Hezekiah and Joseph were not fly by night people. They were God fearing people, just as the prophet Jeremiah. Uh, there were people that just made mistakes. Hey, Amen. there's nothing wrong. And some of us in our times of testing, we will make mistakes. You are not going to be perfect. But we must understand that even so, even in this time when we're working, many of us 40, 60, 60 plus hours a week, 
Uh, not only being maybe one paycheck away, we are one conversation away. We can be one wrong investment away, one wrong bad relationship away from going broke or revealing everything. So uh, if not you, perhaps someone you know in the situation that King Zedekiah did with King Hezekiah. So we must understand, please, that Jeremiah and Hezekiah, they were being tested in different ways, just as Joseph was. But no matter how far you are in your life, uh, once you start putting yourself above being evaluated or tested, once you believe you're too good to go through, um, as soon as we get to the place where we feel we are above reproach and we've arrived, we no longer need uh, to be tested in any way, we must understand that now we are just going to be ripe for a test. So in summation, brothers and sisters, let us not point fingers again at Hezekiah uh, for showing all of his house to the enemy or get mad at the prophet Jeremiah for questioning the Lord as to why the uh, wicked keep getting richer. Instead, let us use their experiences to help guide our own daily walk. Amen. After God, after all, God gave us his word not to point fingers at people. He has not deputized us, brothers and sisters, to go out to point fingers at who is not keeping the code. He has given us his word so that we can examine ourselves, so that we can constantly do self-evaluations to make sure that we uh, are uh, bringing ourselves within compliance. Bless his holy name today. So again, I thank you all for joining me on this Sunday morning. And if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, please have one today. Please do not wait for tomorrow, for tomorrow is given to no man. Amen. We all have an opportunity today, right now, to have a relationship, the best relationship you can ever have with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, bless the Lord today for your word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your spirit, Lord. We pray as we go forth and part our separate ways that you're continually protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger. And we want to thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and all that you will do. And we pray, Lord, that the word you have given us this day makes us stronger, makes us stronger, more keen and aware of the things that are happening in our times of testing. So we thank you, blessed Lord, for this beautiful day. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray today. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you again, brothers and sisters. I am Minister John Pickens, and I want to thank you for joining me for this Sunday morning Word of God. Have a very blessed day.